cast out a devil some years ago. There was a little girl, about 15, 16 years old, they called Show Girl. She was demon possessed. And um, they are taking her from one church to another to try to cast, cast demons out of her. And it just never worked. So we were having this meeting. I was preaching to young people. This was in the church years ago. And um, it was a meeting for their youths. And I was a speaker. And Sugar was there. The reason they called her Sugar was because she was possessed and the demons drove her crazy. They made a mess of her life. She was, she was always doing strange things. And here she was now with lots of chalk and powder on her body from her head down, dirty and smelling. And those who brought her kept her in a certain area, guarding her because they knew she would be messing up, running around and doing some crazy things. And while I was preaching, I already spotted her. I knew something was wrong with her. Then it got to the hour of prayer and worship. And we went on doing this. And suddenly, she ran out from among them and went after her. And she ran to me on the platform. When she got to where I was and was trying to stop her, I held her. When I held her and just barely stroked her hair backward, you know, all the demons went out of her. They all left her. I asked her, what's your name? She told me. Her eyes changed instantly. She became calm. She quieted down, looking at the rest of the congregation, looking at herself. She was so dirty. And I said to them, now you can take her home and clean her up, give her new clothes to wear. Restored to her right mind. I didn't have to talk to a devil or anything. I said that to you for a reason. I've learned a long time that love is the greatest power in the world. There's no demon that stands the presence of love. None of them. Sometimes many people don't understand how the anointing functions. There are degrees of the anointing of God. But I tell you, the more power of that anointing that you want to see, the more love that must be demonstrated. Because it's love that releases that power. And when, it, when you don't understand it, you'll have what you call power without results. I'll explain what that means. Do you know there can be a demonstration of power that will yield no result. T.L. Osborne said one day, a preacher came to him and said to him, when you pray for people, they get healed. He said, but when I pray for people, they only fall. And T.L. said in his reply, that's what you wanted. That's what you got. I wanted them healed. And I got them healed. Power without result. You can preach a powerful message, great, great message that will make people tremble and the sinners will not give their hearts to Christ. For it was a wonderful message. Is that what you want? Yet we have those who may not be so articulate in their communication and they share briefly and share the little that they have yet you see tremendous results. And you wonder, what's the, what's the reason? How can they be so, so proficient? Why? It's called love power. See, 
love power. That's the way it works. And let me tell you this. Sometimes you look at your life. It looks like, oh, I don't experience much of the anointing of God in my life. I want to see greater things. I'll tell you how. It's not your prayer that's going to change it. It's not your fasting that's going to change it. It's your life of love that will change it. That's what will change it. You'd be amazed. See, the Bible tells us about Jesus and his compassion. See the way he thought about the multitudes. The eyes with which he saw them. Bible says he had compassion on them. How can you function when you can have compassion on your wife? How can you function when you can have compassion on those that live with you? How can you function when you don't have compassion on the pastors that work with you? What about compassion for those who work with you? Your, 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 your staff members who work with you. Sometimes I even wonder how, how they're paid, some of the people who work with you, how they're paid. So you and your wife can be well paid. The staff members, nothing. And whatever you give to them, you believe that's all right? They'll stay with that? Not smart. Not smart. Not smart. Let me tell you this. You are greater not by what you have, but by what you give. And the greater those that work under you are, the greater you truly are. The smaller they are, the smaller you are. They are the reflection of your greatness. Never forget it. Try and find out how much they're receiving and pay them better. I don't know whether you understood what I said or not, but I'll say it again. Those who are working under you, find out how much they're receiving. And pay them better. Apart from the fact that there are people who are, um, who are poor managers of money, sometimes there are those who work in the church, work in the ministry, who are so poorly paid that whatever they receive, just, it's just not enough. Just not enough. Now, of course, there's a balance to this, and I'll tell you about it. Firstly, we have to learn to make those who are with us more comfortable. Are you hearing me? Make them more comfortable. Because you see, you have developed your faith. You can get anything. But they probably haven't developed their faith that much. Okay? To get 20,000 naira is a long way off for some of them. But that's not a big deal for you. 
Maybe to get 50,000 naira is a dream for some of them. But for you, it may not mean much. So what? Help their faith. By giving to them, when you give to them, God has answered their prayer and caused their faith to work because of you. Now they can believe more. They can believe more. Are you still there? You sure you're there? What are you going to do about it? 